Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CEC ARZ live lecture. Dear friends, first of all, we would like to congratulate you all because my dear friends, today is World Youth Skills Day and dear friends, your skills are very important for us. That is why uh, we continuously deliver such lectures for you so that uh, you enhance your personality, you grow as an individual and uh, you get the better job in the market and you become a better individual. So dear friends, on this auspicious day, I would like to tell you all that uh, today, that is uh, on 15 July, our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi is going to launch Skill India Mission and uh, under this mission today he is going to unveil new national policy for skill development and uh, entrepreneurship 2015. Dear friends, I would like to tell you all uh, under this scheme, uh, pr uh, our Prime Minister Modi, that is, uh, that is uh, Narendra Modi has decided uh, to provide uh, loan facilities to the students as well as to generate uh, new schemes from time to time so that uh, the youth uh, get more and more employed and they get more and more employment and uh, the youth get chance to build himself or herself. So dear friends, our, this lecture today is also dedicated to uh, skill-based learning. Through this lecture, uh, we are going to learn about uh, how skill-based learning is important and how it enhances the property uh, it enhances your personal your personality so dear friends uh, for this uh, today again we have with us in our studios uh, dr subhash kakkar dr kakkar uh, is an eminent uh, academician or i would say he is an educationist and a very good person to talk on this very topic because with the help of his uh, immense knowledge uh, with the help of uh, this educit platform he keeps on uh, delivering the points which are beneficial to the students so dear friends without wasting any time we would like to uh, carry this lecture forward and let's try to understand more about skill based learning what is skill based learning why it is important and how you can enhance your personality so let's welcome our guest dr subhash kakkar dr kakkar welcome to the educit lecture thank you gitiga and welcome viewers and today is world youth skill day such an importance is given to the skills that the world is celebrating it as world youth skills day our honorable prime minister shri narendra ji modi he has also identified a scope for improvement in India through skills, generation of employment through skill development. He is also launching in India Skill India mission. A number of schemes are being launched to facilitate our young people so that they get good employment and employment of their own choice and at their own terms. So today we are going to discuss the importance of skill in building a good personality and having something in hand where we can depend on as far as our income is concerned. What sort of skills one should adopt? What sort of skills one should learn? What sort of skills one should develop? And what, is, what are the means available to develop all these skills? And what the government is doing for youth, for the skill development? all we are going to discuss today. Till today, we have seen our education system, which is entirely theory based. I would say this system of education is rote based. 
you memorize the things and you re reproduce them in your exams. If you are able to memorize well and you are able to reproduce them well, you may get even 100 percent marks. And we have seen in CA, CBSC exams also and CBSC results also, the people get 100 percent marks in all the subjects. Now, we have to see is this sufficient to get 100 percent marks or something is there which one should learn to become rightly educated so that one can have job of his own choice in the market. And people who get say 100 percent marks, I will not talk about 100 percent, let us assume people are getting 95 percent marks. Even 95 percent is a good percentage as far as marks are concerned. But do the people, do the students learn anything as far as job orientation is concerned, we have to analyze all these things today, which the government has also identified that our education system needs overhauling. A number of things have been introduced by the government also. Entire restructuring of slavery in the universities has been introduced by UGC and from this session onwards entire new slavery are going to be there as far as education is concerned. And what are the changes being made by UGC? These changes are introduction of skill based learning in the entire education system. But we have to see what is the need of this skill based learning. On one side we have education, people are getting 100 percent marks. A few days back I was talking to a principal of a university's college, he showed me an application of a student who wanted admission in the college. He also showed me the mark sheet. He got 100 percent marks in English, but when he addressed the application to the principal of the college, the spellings of this principal were PLE. So, people should know the language properly. This is what the government has emphasized and government has identified something more is to be done in the education system, so that practical knowledge is imparted to the students, so that they are job ready in the market. When they go out of the university, immediately they should be able to get a job and they should start earning and they should, should start contributing towards the development of the country. What happens when people graduate from the university, they look for the jobs which they do not get easily, because something is lacking in them. One part is education system and the other part is their own personality. Their personality is not developed to the extent of giving them a proper job. So, the youth remains unemployed. Now, on the other hand, if our education system is such that along with the education, some skill is also developed in the youth and that particular skill is of the choice of the student, then he carries on with that skill as he is playing a game. Then we, then when he graduate from the college directly, he can join some job where his skill is being utilized. 
that is the aim behind this skill based learning. If this is introduced, on one hand we will provide employment to the youth, on the other hand we will contribute a lot to the development of the country and this is the aim of Skill India mission which is being launched by Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji. On the occasion of World Youth Skill Day and, and this skill learning is now becoming part of rather integral part of entire education system courses which require development of skills are being introduced in the slebai. Our Prime Minister has rightly identified the need of introduction of such skill based learning system and as per him and this is being introduced right at the beginning of any university study. As I have already told UGC has also modified the slebi and university UGC has introduced these courses so that the students who graduate from the university they are job ready and they get jobs of their own choice. And what, what are these skills? I was talking about the language, I was talking about the spellings. Now, if we talk of a language, a student has learned a language in the university. Now, there are different skills which can be imported as far as this particular language is concerned. These skills can be writing skills, these skills can be communication skills. So, one has to attain proficiency in one of these skills as far as the language is concerned and we can talk of any other subject also. If we talk of chemistry, in chemistry also skills can be developed and these skills can be developed through studies in the university. For example, IT skills for the chemist, business skills for the chemist and these things are very important and these things are very logical also. When we go for a job or we go for a business as entrepreneurs, we require IT skills, we require business skills so that we, we should be successful in our endeavors when we graduate from the university. These skills can be environment based also, job oriented courses are required to be developed which directly gives you job. Ability to announcement and these courses are also named on the same terminology, ability enhancement courses, graduate venture into job, they require these skills. Com competency based learning system is being introduced and this is nothing but skill based learning. So, today we are going to discuss skill based learning, what are the aspects we have to see, what are the benefits we are going to get if we introduce these skills in the students at the right time when they are seeking for the jobs. Skill based learning and this is also competency based learning, one of the competencies are to be developed in our youth so that they can convert that competency into a job potential learning and this can also be said choice based learning. All these things are same and we have to see how we can develop these skills. We desperately need skill based education to prepare our country for the future. Management education is a responsibility in this direction and this is given by whom? 
Kiran Majumdar Shah. She says, we desperately need skill-based education to prepare our country for the future. A management education is responsibility in this direction. So everyone who, who is managing the business on a large scale, they have also identified the need for skill development in our youth. According to Shah, future entrepreneurs and leaders need to create jobs and not become job seekers. Our management graduates should not be job seekers, but they should be job givers. They should generate jobs and that kind of education we have to provide to our management students. So as far as statement from Kiran Majumdar Shah is concerned, according to Shah, future entrepreneurs and leaders need to create jobs and not become job seekers. For that, one needs to innovate by seeking new knowledge, upgrading skills and not accepting conventional methods, she said. So we have to adopt new methods and leave behind all the conventional methods. We have to have out of the box thinking. We have to introduce lateral thinking so that we come up with new ideas so that jobs are introduced in plenty. Instead of job seeker, we must be job givers. So while discuss a small grid with the viewers, this grid is name is Omisha grid. On one side, on x axis, the skill level is being mentioned. On the y axis, education level is being discussed. X and y axis, x axis skill power and y axis education. It starts with unskilled and highly skilled, unskilled manpower and highly skilled manpower on the x axis and on the y axis uneducated and highly educated. With this we get four quadrants. First lower most left quadrant, we will discuss this, where skill level is also zero, education is also zero, unskilled and uneducated. A person who does not have any skill, who does not have any education, what sort of job he is going to get? Do you think he will get some skilled jobs? No, not at all. Any job where he requires some education, he is not able to get this job because he is unskilled, uneducated and this particular quadrant tells you that the laborer is part of this quadrant because he is unskilled and uneducated. A helper working with the mason, he belongs to this quadrant. So, after working for few years with the mason, he develops a skill. Then he also starts working like a mason because he has developed some skill. This is the need of the day that a skill be developed. Otherwise, he will remain a helper throughout the life. He will remain a laborer throughout the life. So, this lowermost left quadrant is unskilled, uneducated. Let us move on to the right quadrant and which is a lowermost where it is highly skilled, but education level is also zero. Uneducated, highly skilled. Here craftsmen will come into this quadrant craftsmen, they can work with their own hands and 
they are uneducated. Now concentrate on this particular quadrant where skill level is high but the education is zero. He is a craftsman, he can give you nicest products but he is uneducated, he does not know business skills. So, his earning potential will remain low because he does not know business skills. If for few months he is provided business skills, he can be converted into a good businessman where his craftsmanship can be utilized. So, this is the impact of skill development. Now, let us go to the topmost left quadrant where the skill level is very low and he is highly educated. And these people who are unskilled but highly educated, they feel themselves helpless because as far as skill is concerned, they do not have any skill. Education may be of the highest standard, but they do not have the job potential since they do not have any skill developed. They will remain helpless. They will face lot of difficulties in seeking jobs because they do not have skills. In the interviews, management graduates come for the jobs. The moment you ask you a question, what skills you have developed, they will not be able to give any answer to this question. So, highly educated people, but the skill level is zero, they are helpless in getting the jobs. Now, let us move on to the fourth and the last quadrant, which is highly skilled and highly educated and these are the winners and these winners will get the jobs of their own choice and at their own terms. What we want in India to convert the youth into winners so that they contribute to the development of the country instead of wasting time and sitting idle unemployed. We want people, youth to be highly educated and highly skilled. When they move out of the college, they should be job ready. The companies should offer them the jobs because from the very first day they can start contributing to the organization and the jobs should be of their own choice because they have developed the skills what they wanted. They will perform the jobs as they are playing on the playground. If such is a case, their efficiency will be highest and their morale will be high and they will always be motivated to contribute a lot to the organization for which they are working. As I have already discussed the language skills, for example, skills based learning is focused on the four skills related with the language, speaking, listening, reading and writing. The four interactive processes we use the language for are definitely important and it is desirable to keep a balance in learning these abilities and managing them as well as possible. All these skills <clears throat> when developed and they should be developed in a balanced manner so that we can contribute as far as our language is concerned 
and the type of job we are going to have. In some cases, depending on the occupation of the learner, there may be a special interest in learning some skill faster or better than others. Examples might be the flight attendant who needs to interact verbally with the passengers just to welcome them or help them to pass by the process of boarding and stay comfortable during the flight needs to have a very good communication skill. Or the person whose work is to answer mails from customers worldwide in an international company which center of attention could be the writing. So here is in contrast to a flight attendant and the mail attendant on one side we are saying speaking skills, communication skills and the other side we are saying writing skills. The right type of skill is to be developed as per the choice of the student. The same it would be happen to an international magazine editor who has to master writing more than other English ability and here we will consider the writing skills. And what about the politic guy whose job is to keep informed to the government about the written things in international newspapers. Consequently, we can find people interested in learning more specific ability than other. Here, the reading skills are involved. We read something and we get a meaning out of it. If such skill is developed, we can be a good magazine reader for international studies. The skill based learning has the advantage to develop the power of communication in itself. It develops the abilities to deal with new language. In conclusion, the learning enhances the abilities to use the senses with the new language without taking in account the areas where the learner will use this one. The learning might come from a big variety of useful and non-useful scenarios. The benefits of skill based learning. Now we will discuss what are the benefits of having competency based learning or skill based learning. Skill based learning, what does it do? It increases employee productivity. In addition to learning how to complete new tasks and take on more responsibility, employees can learn advanced techniques to help them complete everyday tasks more efficiently. For example, sending you, your bookkeeper to an advanced Excel class may help him or her learn shortcuts to simplify the accounting process. Now this is the benefit of skill based learning. We discussed somebody has joined in the accounts department. If he is having the knowledge of advanced excel, he will be able to contribute more to the department. If he knows the software tally, he can contribute even better to the department because he has developed a skill to record keeping as far as accounts are concerned or bookkeeping as far as accounts are concerned. He has mastered advanced excel, he has mastered tally and then he can do his job in an efficient way and his output will also be more. Since this particular skill is of his own choice, he will be happy also while carrying out the job, while doing his job. So a BCom graduate, a commerce graduate during his graduation, if he learns 
a skill like advanced excel or accounts software like tally then his job becomes easier his output will be more his efficiency will also be more and he'll get satisfaction to his fullest extent and this is the benefit of having skill developed skill based learning reduces turnover employees who don't receive guidance or have difficulty learning the ropes are much more likely to leave your company employees are less likely to leave if they have the opportunity to learn new skills and keep up within their industry now on one side a graduate a raw graduate is put on the job on the other side a graduate having a particular skill developed is put on the job a person who doesn't have any skill he will always be struggling to give the output to complete his job but on the other hand a person who has attained some skill which is as per the job requirements he will carry out the job more efficiently and he is going to enjoy the job also so productivity enhancement is there when one has a developed skill in his character skill based learning improves job satisfaction investing time and money in employees skills makes them feel valued and appreciated and it challenges them to learn more and get more involved in their jobs higher job satisfaction ultimately results in reduced turnover and higher productivity i already explained we get more satisfaction on the job if we have the proper skills to do the job because our morale will always be high we will always be happy our output will also be maximum when we feel that we are contributing a lot to the progress of the organization will remain happy will not think of leaving the job so turnover reduces and productivity improves that is the benefit of skill based learning skill based learning aids in the recruitment process also if you are committed to training you will be more willing to hire a desirable candidate who lacks a specific skill training also makes your company more attractive in the eyes of potential employees because it shows them that they have room to grow and accept new challenges in addition training existing employees could reduce the need to hire new staff and this is the benefit of skill based learning we learn the skills in the university itself rather than learning in the organization though organizations also provide skill based training system but if we are trained enough after graduation then the organization will be very happy with our output and performance skill based learning rewards long time employees you will be more willing to promote existing employees who have learned new skills and are ready to take on new challenges when the employee is ready to take up new challenges then everyone is happy with the performance of the organization and everyone in the organization is happy with the 
attitude of the employee. This is the benefit of the skill based learning. Now, skill based learning reduces the need for employee supervision. Now, when the employee is equipped with skills which are needed to carry out the job, then he is the master of his own job. I would say he is the CEO of his own job. He knows better than anybody else in the organization regarding the job he is doing. So, when such is a case, no supervision is required to supervise his job because he is doing his own job as per the requirements of the job. And by doing so, he will be giving the output to the organization for which he is working. So, skill based learning reduces the need for employee supervision. Not only does skill based training teach employee how to do their jobs better, but it also helps them work more independently and develop a can do attitude. When this type of attitude is present in the employee that I can do and that is a stage when people will think about his promotion also. So, no compromises are there, no excuses are given by the employee because he knows his job very well, he knows the skills required for carrying out the job and he has also developed the attitude of can do, then nobody can stop him from developing his own career. Skill based learning or skill based education and training is an approach to teaching and learning more often used in learning concrete skills than abstract learning. It differs from other non related approaches in that the unit of learning is extremely fine grained. Here we have talked about two things one is skill based learning, other is skill based education. These two things are similar to each other. On one side, we are talking about education. On the other side, we are talking about skill development. When these two things happen together, we are providing education to the youth and we are providing skill to the youth that he is educated, he is skilled also. Then he belongs to the topmost right quadrant of our, of our grid and he becomes a winner in contributing a lot to the development of the country also. It differs from other non related approaches in that the unit of learning is extremely fine grain. Rather than a course or a module, every individual skill learning outcome known as a competency is one single unit, learners work on one competency at a time, which is likely a small component of a larger learning goal. The student is evaluated on the individual competency and only once they have mastered it, do they move on to the others. Here we are discussing the competency level attained by the youth, competency level attained by the student in the university. Once he has developed the desired level of competency in the skill, then he is moved on to another skill. And another skill is developed in his personality and he is evaluated on that second skill also. When he has achieved, when he has attained 
a particular level of competency in that skill also, then he is moved on the another skill. Maybe only one skill is imported to him and which is of his own choice. But in that particular skill, level of attainment is of the highest order as far as skill development, development is concerned. So, on one side he has been imported education, on the other side he is also imported skill. When these two things are there, he can be a good contributor in the growth of the organization also and he can get a job of his own choice and he is able to get the job on his own terms also. After that, higher or more complex competencies are learned to a degree of mastery and isolated from other topics. Another common component of competency based learning is the ability to skip learning modules entirely if the learner can demonstrate they already have mastery. That can be done either through prior learning assessment or formative testing. If there are two competencies or two skills, if the two competencies have something common and the student has learned one of the skills thoroughly and the common portion can be avoided in learning the second skill and that can be tested also, that can be assessed also. For example, people learning to drive might first have to demonstrate their mastery of rules of the road, safety, defensive driving, parallel parking etcetera. Then they may focus on two independent competencies using the clutch break with right foot and shifting up and down through the gears etcetera. So, there are two competencies having something common in learning the second competency the common thing can be avoided. Once the learner have demonstrated they are comfortable with those two skills the next skill might be introduced finding first from full stop to a slow roll followed by sudden stops, shifting up and down shifting because this is kinetic learning the instructor likely would demonstrate the individual skill. A few times then the student would perform guided practice followed by independent practice until they can demonstrate their mastery. And this is a driving skill at the initial stage while learning driving the instructor tells you where the brake pedal is, where the accelerator is, how to engage the vehicle in first gear, second gear and third gear and how to put the brakes, what is the use of clutch and how to operate the accelerator. But after mastering the skill one does not have to look for the brake pedal if something, somebody comes in front of the vehicle and he wants to stop the vehicle. Automatically his foot will press the right pedal so that the brakes are applied and such type of competency we want to inculcate in the students as far as the skills are concerned. Competency based learning is learner focused and works naturally with independent study and with the instructor in the role of facilitator. Learners often find different individual skills more difficult than others. This learning method allows a student to learn those individual skills they find challenging at their own pace, practicing and refining as much as they like. 
then they can move rapidly through other skills to which they are more adept. Most other learning methods use summative testing, but the skill based learning requires mastery of every individual learning outcome, making it very well suited to learning credentials in which safety is an issue. With summative testing, a student who has 80 percent in an evaluation may have an 80 percent mastery of all learning outcomes or may have no mastery whatsoever of 20 percent of the learning outcomes. Further, the student may be permitted to move on to higher learning and still be missing some abilities that are crucial to that higher learning. The idea behind skill based learning is that we have to provide the skill to the level of 100 percent as far as competency is concerned, so that his job becomes easier, he is able to contribute a lot to the organization for which he is working. Now, we can have an example of a student who knows most traffic laws and has mostly mastered controlling a vehicle also could be treated equally to a student who has a very high mastery of vehicle control, but no understanding of traffic laws, but only one of those students should be permitted to drive. And that is the importance of skill development in giving a job to a particular person looking at the skills which he has attained. What it means to have mastered a competency depends on the learning domain subject matter. In subject matter that could affect safety, it would be usual, usual to expect complete learning that can be repeated every time in abstract learning such as algebra, the learner may only have to demonstrate that they identify an appropriate formula. But in skill based learning, he is to demonstrate his skills at every moment of his job. That is the importance to be given to the skill development. For example, four or five times since when using that skill in the next competency. Resolving a formula will usually allow opportunity the learner to discover and correct their mistakes. It is important to understand that this is learning methodology and this learning methodology is common in many kinetic and or skills based learning, but is also sometimes applied to students who find themselves out of step with their grade. We see that as far as education is concerned, one has achieved grades at a mediocre level and we also find that the same fellow, same student has attained the grades in skill development of the highest order. Now, because it shows that he is not much interested in the education, he is more interested in the skill development, he is more interested in the jobs where his own skill is being utilized. As I have already said, if we are carrying out a job of our own choice and where skill of our own choice is utilized, then we carry out the job as if we are playing a game. If such is the case, our output will be of the maximum order, efficiency will also of the maximum order our job satisfaction will also be of the highest order. We provide education to such people 
to the minimum desired, minimum required, minimum specified level only. We provide the skills of the highest order and the highest level so that such kind of people can have jobs of their own choice and then finally they should remain happy and satisfied in their domain. If such is a case, then these kind of people can contribute a lot to the development of the country. Course or program of study, increasingly educational institutions are evaluating ways to include competency based learning methodologies in many different types of programs in order to make learning success a constant while student pace can vary. Our government has included skill based learning at the graduate level, at the university level, in the slabi of the degree course. The idea behind is the same to get the results that we are providing education, we are providing skill based learning, skills are being developed, which are job oriented courses. So, people getting skills developed of their own choice, so that they can have the job again at their own terms. Competency based learning is an educational technique that can be applied in many fields and learning environments. It is an area of pedagogical research and is not adequately understood in one single learning domain such as that which follows in this discussion. We feel that we must provide skills to our students. We teach them say statistics. We should also teach them a skill as far as statistics are concerned. We must teach them some software so that they can become marketing research analysts, business analysts, business analytics, research analysts and these are the skills we must provide to our students. Along with the education, I said we teach them say for example statistics, we build skills in them so that they can become useful to the organization and useful to the country. I said business analysts, business analytics, data analytics, research analysts, business analysts, marketing research analysts, all these jobs are related to person who has studied statistics. Some skill should also be added on to his course, then he becomes more useful to the organization and he becomes job ready for the organization. The moment he joins, a, joins any organization, from the very first day, he can start contributing to the growth of the organization. Best practices. Competency profiles assist in effective learning and developing, identifying the behaviors, knowledge, skills and abilities that are necessary for successful performance in a job. Here we must provide those kind of skills for which the student is interested and which are required to be competent in the job. If education plus skill and the skill of the student's choice is provided, then we get 
a maximum efficiency in the job performance. Employees can assess their competencies against those required for their own job. Here we are telling that on one side, the student has developed a particular skill. On the other side, job requirement for that particular skill is there. And the student can assess his own skill level and the requirement of the job as far as skill level is concerned. Then he can assess his own ability, whether he will be able to perform well in the organization at that particular job or not. So employees can assess their own competencies and abilities against those required for their own job or for another job in which they are interested and then they take steps to acquire or improve any necessary competencies. Competencies support learning by what? Focusing learning on the critical competencies needed for success. So here we are to identify the competencies we have to identify the skills required for a particular job. Once these are identified, then student opts for those kind of skills in his own institute or in the college. College authorities provide him required and desired skills. Once he has attained those skills and the college helps in providing standards for measuring employee performance and capabilities, providing the frame for, framework for identifying learning options, curriculum, programs to meet employees and organizational needs. So viewers, today we discussed skill-based learning, choice-based learning, competency-based learning its importance, its benefits and we also demonstrated through the talk how important the attainment of these skills are and how these skills will help the youth in getting the job of their own choice in their own field of work. I hope the viewers will make use of this lecture for developing their own skills. First they are to identify the skills they want and then they finally go for those kind of skills. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you sir. Thank you so very much and dear friends, I hope that uh, this lecture would be very, very beneficial for you and uh, you might have got uh, uh, tips from Dr. Subhash Kakkar on uh, skill based learning. I hope that these tips will help you out in uh, uh, forming a better personality. So uh, once again, thank you all. Thank you sir. Thank you thank so you. very much.